Today, I am going to use Mathematica to visualize a po nanoparticle polymer network and to investigate how the polymer length affects the probability that polymer will cross link nanoparticles and how the polymer length affects the nanoparticle polymer network formation. Polymers are macromolecules composed of hundred to thousand subunits. They can absorb many different configurations depending on the identity of their subunits. Common everyday examples of polymers are PVC, polystyrene, teflon, and so on. When particles and polymers of favorable interaction are mixed, it is not always apparent whether they will form a crosslink network. If the polymer configuration makes the end-to-end -end distance of the polymer shorter than the distance between two particles, no polymer particle network will form. This project will focus on visualizing the interaction between particles and polymers given polymer's length or the number of subunits. In stage one, we make polymer by using the random walk method. We consider particle as many lattice size. Polymer will start from a random lattice size. This initiation part just ensure that the polymer will truly random walk at a certain distance away from the surface of the particle. In the random walk simulation, the step size is the length of the subunit of the polymer, which is about 10 times smaller than the size of the particles. Um, the step angle will tell you the direction that the polymer will walk. Um, the step tell you how much the polymer will walk in the x and the y direction. Um, the next position of the polymer will be the current position of the polymer plus step. Each time the new polymer position is computed, it is stored inside a list which we call path. Once we have the polymer path, we can visualize it inside the particle matrix using graphic. In stage two, we want to generate many polymers and visualize how they distribute and interact with particles inside a lattice of many particles. And in order to do so, we combine all the steps in stage one into one function, polymer random walk, which takes in the polymer length and the lattice of particles and returns the polymer path. We will generate a hundred random random walk polymers of a thousand subunit by using table. We visualize the polymers and particle matrix using graphic. In stage three, we want to calculate the probability of crossover between nanoparticle and polymers by counting how many polymers that wrap around more than two particles. In a nutshell, we write a function in crosslink success, which tests whether each subunit of the polymer would touch a neighboring particle by using region member. If there is at least a subunit that successfully crosses a particle, the polymer connects two or more particles and the function returns one. If the polymer fails to cross a particle, the function will return zero. So we run this function over many polymers by using the pair function and this is the result that we got. And we really want to know the ratio um, of the crosslink polymer to a total number of polymers and to do that we just do a simple math by dividing the number of um, successfully crosslink polymer to the total of number of polymers. Below is a function that calculates the ratio of polymer that link two or more particles together.
Next, we calculate the ratio of cross-linking for polymers of various lengths 100, 200, 500, 800, 1000, and 1500. Since the operation take a while, I'll show just the results. The most, interesting, the most interesting thing that we can obtain from this data is actually plotting the ratio of crosslink versus the polymer length. What we find out is that as the polymer length increases, the probability to crosslink increases. This makes sense because as the polymer gets longer, it can walk a larger distance and touch a particle. What is even more interesting is that the graph has the shape of a log function. We go ahead and use fit to generate a least square fit uh, equation, and then we plot it with the data. Um, as you can see, um, the square fit function gives you a pretty good fit of the data. What this fit tell you is that first, there's a minimum number of subunits um, the crosslink will occur um, in our case. Um, the minimum polymer length will have to be between 100 and 200 subunits to be able to provide you some type of crosslinking between polymer and nanoparticles. Second, the graph plateau at a certain polymer length. Any polymers that are longer than this will not increase the probability of crosslink. Although the analysis of probability for polymer to crosslink is useful, it does not tell any information about the network of polymers and particles as a whole. So in stage 4, I will use cluster analysis to analyze, to analyze network formation given polymer length and particle distribution. In a nutshell, the function single polymer crosslink test will return all the particles lattice size um, which the input polymer can connect. Then we use a built-in function, um, undirected edge and graph to visualize this connection. We want to do the simulation for all the polymers and particles to visualize the connectedness within our polymer nanoparticle network, then use a cluster analysis to analyze the network form by mixing polymer and nanoparticles together. Uh, in here, um, we write a little function that basically um, uh, run this single polymer crossing test over many polymer of the same length. What I want to show you um, is this um, graph community plot and phi graph communities. Um, in this graph, you see that there's many clusters uh, which has a very dense cross-linking between polymer and nanoparticles. However, uh, most of the cluster do not connect it together. This suggests that the, the, the a network of polymer and nanoparticle may not be formed even though you have many clusters of densely cross-linking between nanoparticles and polymers. What I want to show next is a comparison between a cluster network of a hundred subunit polymer and a cluster network of a thousand subunit polymers. As you can see, as a polymer length increase, uh, there is a higher chance that cluster um, can connect together. So definitely the polymer length can affect the connectedness of the system and give a higher chance uh, that polymer can connect nanoparticle and form a cohesive network. In a realistic system of polymers and nanoparticles, which have favorable interaction, once a polymer hits a nanoparticle, it will stick to that nanoparticle. In the system that we used above, 
polymers are allowed to work in such a way that does not take into account the interaction between nanoparticles and polymers. In stage 5, we'll attempt to take into account that interaction by using this algorithm step. First, we make a lattice of nanoparticle size. Um, one lattice size is randomly selected, and a random walker will spawn from that side and can walk. If polymer walker hits a charge side, including the original one, then the polymer stick to that side. The modified polymer random walk function is very similar to the random walk polymer function above, except for um, its use region member um, to test whether or not a subunit touch a particle. If the subunit touch a particle, um, the function will stop and return the current path. Here, um, I generate a hundred polymer of a thousand subunit by using um, this modified polymer random walk function and using graphics to visualize it. As you can look into this picture, um, the probability that polymers were crosslink nanoparticles decreases because you restricted it to um, stopping once the polymer hitting a nanoparticle. Although this approach takes into account the interaction between nanoparticles and polymer, it is still not a realistic representation of a real system. In this approach, we let a polymer subunit spawn on the particle surface and grow into a polymer. In a real system, polymers are thrown into a dispersed solution of particles. The conformation of polymers in a dynamic process in which the entire polymer twist turns so that the two ends of the polymer find nanoparticle surface. This project has not taken into account the dynamic conformation of polymers in a dilute solution. For future research, I would like to improve this project by taking into account polymer conformation when doing polymer random walk and finding how polymer concentration and nanoparticle concentration affect the nanoparticle polymer network by doing cluster analysis. I would like to thank Dr. Kina for your guidance on this project. I would like to thank Professor Carter for teaching uh, 3016, which um, I found very helpful for my project, for my uh, the uh, the project I'm working on my Europe right now. And I would like to thank all the TAs in 3016 for helping me during office hours.